Welcome to the Real Freedom Podcast, where we inspire you to pursue your passion to gain time and financial freedom through opportunities in real estate. I'm your host, Mike Swenson. Let's get some real freedom together. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Real Freedom Stories. And I'm so excited to share with you. You know, a lot of times we have people who have real estate experience and have done great things. And this is a great story of a husband and wife couple who have had not any real estate experience coming in and being very successful. So uh, today we've got Roy Brega Yomwe, uh, who's going to share with us his story and his wife, Anna. Um, and so they are local to the Minneapolis St. Paul area. So a little bit about your guys' background. So you were in East Africa and actually have had a, a filmmaking background talking about, you know, social justice issues. And we'll dig into that. And then your wife, Anna, actually has a background in healthcare. So what better spot to think, okay, we're going to get into real estate is you've got somebody in filmmaking and you've got somebody um, with, a, with a medical background and a teaching background here. And, uh, and so real estate makes a lot of sense. So welcome, Roy. Um, Thank why you. don't you just give us a little bit more uh, about you and your wife's background and, and kind of how you guys got into real estate. Perfect. Great to be here with you, Mike. And thanks for this opportunity. It's always an honor for us to share this journey, hopefully to inspire somebody who is on the sidelines and is wondering, is this for me? Can I really do this? Mm-hmm. So this is something that you can do. So Um, My background, as uh, Mike mentioned, is film and journalism. I worked for a nonprofit in East Africa that helped rescue child soldiers, take care of orphans, as well as rescue sex slaves from the civil war that happened out there with Joseph Corney. Maybe some of you might have heard of him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my background. Um, I worked with my mother in interior design, and that's kind of where this whole idea about real estate was birthed and I was Mm -hmm. I always admired American stories of how one generation starts a business and that's carried on to other generations so I love biographies I love to read people's stories and I got a desire to carry my mom's business to the next level so I started Mm -hmm. looking into real estate investing but unfortunately in Uganda there wasn't anything streamlined like an education or courses and many times things are very informal, sometimes can get dangerous. You try to strike a deal with somebody that you're a broker, you don't even need a license to be a broker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then if it goes south, they probably try to get hold of, um, eliminate you so they can take the whole deal. So that's yeah. the kind of environment that I was raised in. Yeah, and so when I moved here in the, uh, to, the, to, to the US in 2012, mm-hmm. I came out here to do some film work And then my journalism wouldn't convert because of course the culture is different, affairs are different. So I decided to start from the bottom and work my way up. (laughs) So I did some merchandising work in Target. I did some CNA work. And then I did client relations for an HVAC company for a friend of mine in Massachusetts. And Mm -hmm. then I started thinking, hey, how do I get back into this game? Maybe I should get my license. That was actually my thought. Mm-hmm. To get into real estate investing, I need my license. And so by the time my wife, my wife and I met, I had bought a bunch of CDs. I had attended some seminars. And this particular seminar was teaching about tax liens and tax deeds, because mm-hmm. that is actually a strategy that you could use to get into real estate. So mm-hmm. I was studying this strategy for like three years, trying to figure it out. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough support community, you know, mentorship to make it work. Some of mm-hmm. the terms they were using were complicated <laughs> right. so that you could buy the next product. Exactly. So, yep. <laughs> it was frustrating, but I was like, I got to figure this out. But anyway, um, long story short, my, when I told my wife about, hey, I should get my license, she was like, no, you're going to be showing houses. We're going to be gone. We've been long distance dating. That's not going to work. But um, when we started our film business, because, of course, entrepreneur wheels are spinning, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. We started this film business. um, And that's really how we came across this community of real estate investors in the Twin Cities. They had education, but they also had collaboration. And then they had the mentorship and coaching. We're like, this is perfect. My wife was like, 
I'm going to try to search for it and investigate it myself. This stuff is free on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she quickly realized why reinvent the wheel when there is essentially classes that have been really made by professionals that are specific to their areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. Why not plug in and play? And that is really in a nutshell how we got into this real estate mm -hmm. investing. Yeah. Well, and I think too, a lot of times, you know, because when I'm in real estate forums or Facebook groups or whatnot, you know, and, and people bring up the the question about a, a coaching program or a mentorship type program. And, you know, you'll see the people in there that say, hey, you know, why, why do that? Because all the information's on the internet, or you can go find a YouTube video and watch it, you know, <laughs> but it's a, it's a different set. There's, there's accountability to it. And mm -hmm. there's hand holding, you know, in, in terms of showing you what to do, and really laying out the path. Um, Cause yeah. I think that's, what's really important. Yes. The information's out there, but there's a lot of great information. There's a lot of not great information mm -hmm. and to be able to show you here's step one, step two, step three, and to have people who have walked through that already and show you there's now you don't have all the outside noise um, to complicate things. And, and, and in a lot of ways, real estate, it's, it's simple. It's not easy. You have to follow certain steps, but then too, you also know what steps not to follow. And Absolutely. so I think that's where, you know, what, what you're talking about really makes a lot of sense. And especially for somebody outside of real estate, it's like, Hey, I just want to just show me what to do and let's do this versus me trying to spend the next, however many years, you know, figuring it out. So why don't you talk a little bit about finding the deals, a little bit of the work that you've done, what your portfolio mm. looks like now mm. versus when you started, let's kind of dig into that a little bit. Yeah, sounds good. So finding the deals, like I said, we came in, we were hired to take pictures for this broker and this community of investors. Mm -hmm. and then we came to another meeting where they had a mentor flying into town and just to help the community learn about business credit and how to leverage that to build their businesses. And so mm -hmm. we're like, oh, this makes sense to us. So mm -hmm. essentially we plugged into a community of investors Mm -hmm. We got an opportunity to essentially um, be handheld, right? Yep. And so an individual who was already flipping a bunch of houses said, hey, you guys could help me with my projects. So right off the bat, we got to participate in about 10 flips in the first year and a half. Mm -hmm. So we got to hire crews, we got to manage the projects and all that stuff. So essentially something that would have been complex because every day we were around flips. Mm -hmm. And some of these flips, I know you asked about acquisition. So we were primarily doing fix and flips and we were mostly finding them through wholesalers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because wholesalers essentially do a lot of work, door knocking, buy lists from the county and wherever. And so mm -hmm. they assign contracts to the investors and the investors essentially improve the properties. For the most part, these are properties that need some TLC and then put mm -hmm. them back on, back on the market or maybe one or two you can hold on to. So mm -hmm. primarily we did uh, fix and flips and we found them through wholesalers. But every now and then these properties came from lenders. Mm -hmm. One particular one I remember in the Hamlin Avenue in St. Paul, uh, a lender had this borrower that failed to perform. <laughs> so they were like, hey, you guys have performed before, so I'll pass this on to you. So we had some of those as well come through from lenders with borrowers who failed to perform. And then um, in this market, you might realize that prices are, of course, are pretty high. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we know that fix and flip is a great place to earn an income. Buy and hold is a great strategy to build wealth. Hmm. So yeah. we got started with the fix and flip and we loved it. And we still do it if a decent deal comes across. But then right now we are diversifying and getting into the buy and hold to build wealth. Mm -hmm. And also buy and hold that also has a little bit of a niche, uh, the short term rentals, we're getting into that space as well. So how are you deciding then, you don't have to go into to, to great detail here, but like, mm -hmm. how are you deciding which properties to move forward um, mm -hmm. with and which ones to say no to? Sounds absolutely so when I just moved to the Twin Cities, I had my tax lien strategy <laughs> that I was trying to get my wife on board. And I was looking out for um, the county, uh, the sheriff, sheriff sales. Sales, yep. You know? And so I, would, I was not familiar with the Twin Cities. 
So when I would mention certain areas, like, hey, this, this is coming up for sale uh, very soon. And my wife would be like, what neighborhood is it? <laughs> so mm -hmm. the truth, the reality is there is neighborhoods that are um, more desirable. Mm -hmm. So that is really um, our strategy. And there is neighborhoods that are less desirable where you could do a certain strategy like Section 8, mm -hmm. where your rentals, essentially a Section 8, whereby essentially you're paid by the state or whatever right so our, we have decided because we're from different backgrounds we have different comfort levels mm -hmm. we have decided what gives us peace is having properties in desirable areas because mm -hmm. essentially they appreciate better and mm -hmm. when there is a correction they get hit last right so mm -hmm. that is really what we're concentrating on it's the crime like look out for crime, drive the blocks and see what's going on. Is there development happening? Is it the mm -hmm. only house that's going to be over improved? <laughs> mm -hmm. so essentially, those are some of the things we look out for. Drive the neighborhood, look on um, Trulia, see how much crime is in that neighborhood. And so that's really uh, what we have decided for us. That is our ID. We call it the investor ID. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So then uh, when you talked about doing fix and flips, um, you had mentioned that you had crews and stuff like that. Um, how were you able to, to figure out who are, because a lot of people wonder, you know, as far as relationships really matter and finding great relationships with vendors is really important. Um, mm -hmm. So how are you able to, to find those, those great people to work with? Absolutely. Great question. Um, so one of those was we took, we took these courses and we have courses on fix and flip, multifamily, commercial, whichever it is. Mm -hmm. So we get to learn from our instructors and see what strategies do they have in place mm -hmm. to hire their crews, right? Yep. So we've implemented some of that. We vet our crews. When we have a project, we want to have multiple bids. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to make sure we have multiple bids, but also whenever I met contractors, whenever I was driving and I came across a contractor's van, I reached out, asked for their card, and then I asked them to send me some of their work, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? To yep. get a sense of what quality of work it is. And mm -hmm. also drop by when they're doing a project to make sure it is their work. So mm -hmm. essentially you want multiple bids, but you also want to vet their work. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes you'll hire a contractor thinking they're going to be good, and then they turn out to have issues that, you know, maybe their style is not necessarily um, up to what your expectations or mm -hmm. their um, quality of work. Mm -hmm. They might be licensed by the quality of their work might not fit your expectations. Right. Right. So that's kind of how we've been able to hire crews. We've been able to let some crews go because of certain things like that, their style, mm -hmm. work ethic. You know, we've hired some GCs in the past and then they're at our project and then they're going to another project and we're paying for their time. And also mm -hmm. things that really have helped us to, essentially, when we find good crews, we want to keep them. Make sure you're paying them on time. Make sure you set the expectations right before the, um, the, the deal happens, right before the work starts. Mm -hmm. Set the expectations, tell them what you're willing to pay pay them on time, but also give them bonuses. We give bonuses. Why? Because mm -hmm. that attracts them to work for us in future. Right. So yeah, that's all those dynamics come into play. Mm -hmm. Because really, if you treat the contractors the wrong way, then you're really, your projects are going to be hard down the road. But also mm -hmm. vet their work, make sure they live up to, up to the expectations. Make sure they're doing work that fits and suits your standards. So how many projects or how many homes do you have that you're working on at any given time? So when we got started, I mentioned how we did, we were a part of 10 flips in one and a half years. Yep. <laughs> that was a lot to take on. We mm -hmm. were just newbies in the business. We were just getting started. So it got overwhelming, particularly for- So how, um, how long are you, were you on a, a normal flip? <clears throat> like how so long would one flip, flip take? A normal flip would take around about three, four months, five months max, right? Okay. But because yep. we had all these projects going on at the same time, at one time we had four flips going on at the same time, mm -hmm. we realized we're, we were spreading ourselves thin, right? Mm -hmm. And then the margins were dwindling as well, because if you're spreading yourself thin, that means the projects are going to take longer, right? right? 
And then budgets, if one project is of course, and you, you have to pour a little more money into it, that's gonna split, spill over to the next project. So mm -hmm. then contractors, if you don't have, if you have crews that are you know, not exactly the right fit, it also makes the project even go longer. So that's what we were doing, but we realized mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a headache. Mm -hmm. So we decided we would rather get a, just a bunch of, a handful of good deals, just a few good deals, per mm -hmm. year rather mm -hmm. than do five flips in a year and have them take longer and be stressed about it and have right. a you know resources spread thin so we've really scaled down mm -hmm. to doing a couple of good deals a year mm -hmm. and of course now that we combine buy and hold with fix and flip we are very picky because i mean there is individuals who say i'm going to do the work myself but our <laughs> our idea is how many deals can you do yourself as opposed to if you hire the crews and supervise them, then you're able to get more done. So right. our, our business ID is we get a good deal that has some good meat on it, mm -hmm. hire the right crews, pay them well, and get a good profit on the back end rather than do a bunch of deals, which are very skinny and we're hoping that we make money on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep. yeah, we've really scaled down from mm -hmm. the experience we had when we're getting started. Yep. So walk through um, maybe on the, on the front end, on the financing piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, not necessarily just you guys specifically, but maybe others, you know, that you've, you've been working with, how are you finding um, the financing? Cause I know most people will say, I don't have the money for the down payment. Mm -hmm. um, how do I, how do I get started in real estate if I don't have mm -hmm. the money or what are some ways that I can find that money? Absolutely. That is a very key component. And one of the things that we teach people every day in our classes when we hold webinars every week is there is about five different currencies you can leverage in real mm -hmm. estate. Okay. Money just happens to be one of them. Time is the other. Relationships, credibility, right? So those mm -hmm. are all currencies you can bring to the table. Yep. So essentially education too is actually at currency. <laughs> so yep. five of those. So how do we find the money? Some of this money we find because of the credibility we've built. People have mm -hmm. seen us do stuff. People literally reach out to us on social media and say, we would like to be a part of your next deal. We have some money. We would love to invest with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we've, we actually have classes that are tailored to teaching you how to talk to investors. Um, the most investable money in the whole world, literally, is in self-directed retirement plans. Yes. Yep. There is over, by now we should be over $30 trillion. Most of that money is invested in stocks. And as if you know anything about stocks, one time you're gaining, the next time you're losing. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so one of the ways we have learned, raised money is to learn how to speak the language to individuals who have money in mm -hmm. their retirement plans yep and of course making sure their money is protected by the real estate mm -hmm. so essentially having the the know-how of having those conversations has attracted lenders to us but there is really multiple ways that you can acquire real estate there is hard money lenders out there very quick money but expensive mm -hmm. <laughs> then there is uh, people credit building business credit that's something we've been building since we got started you know, and there is specific ways that you can build business credit, whereby mm -hmm. at this point we we are up to maybe over eighty thousand in our business name mm -hmm. that we can also leverage to acquire or at least fund some of the transactions. I would say some of the rehabs. So there is mm -hmm. definitely multiple ways. It could be a relative, it could be people who have a bunch of money in their accounts. Um, it could be your own retirement account that you could borrow from actually and invest in real estate. Of mm -hmm. course, that money has to go back into your retirement. So yeah, there is definitely a lot of places to find money. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to leverage the other currencies. If you build your credit, but also build relationships, those relationships could convert into lenders, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So And also time. Sometimes if you don't have the money, but have the time, somebody could bring the money. You could partner up. You are the person who invests the time, and somebody else brings the money to the table, and then right. you do a deal. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think for some people, it's blocking out the time to really think that through and plan it out. Like, what what mm -hmm. do I have to offer here? What can I give to somebody? 
And, you know, we've had past uh, people on where they've mentioned like, okay, if, if I'm going to an investor, you don't want to just say, uh, hey, I don't have any money. Uh, give me your money and let me try to help you make more money, right? Like you have to show that your <laughs> that their investment is safe with you. So exactly. you've got to know your numbers. You've got to have a Absolutely. good plan. And yeah, if it, if it takes a little bit of sweat equity or a little bit of more time on the early end to get started, that will help you to gain money, credibility, to have a, a proof of concept that you know what you're doing. You've been able to, to do this before so that others can trust you. Absolutely. And just show them what you've done. And also just give them the assurance that their money, they're in first position. I mean, depending on how much they lend you mm -hmm. and anything goes wrong, they can liquidate the property. <laughs> right. So just showing them the track record, but also giving them some security for the money they're lending, mm -hmm. you know, and of course the return, what return are you giving them? Is that competitive to what they're getting in the stock market? Mm -hmm. So that really helps too. What else is important that you guys help teach others? So really, People have different backgrounds, you know, there is individuals who are like, I don't have a bunch of money. So we I, why I love this education is regardless where you are, the other day I was listening to a teenager in Utah who was in maths class. It was boring. I don't know if I shared this with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he went yeah. on the MLS and just Googled, found this deal that he could literally make about 70,000 mm -hmm. on this deal, teenager. Yeah. But it's really, there is things in your life that you can start right now executing to help you build a foundation. We like mm -hmm. to encourage people that this is not a sprint. Unfortunately, many people are like, I want to make money fast, mm -hmm. right? If you want to be in this for the long haul, take the time to build a good foundation. Mm -hmm. So essentially, some of the very basic classes we teach are about how to set up your entity. You might know about how if you set up, if you have a fix and flip business and you have that set up as an LLC, you're going to be taxed more than if mm -hmm. it's set up as an escrow. If mm -hmm. you have a buy and hold, you want to set it up as an LLC because then you pay, you know, the kind of taxes that you're going to pay. So essentially having this in place, how to, you know, set up your entity that's foundational, how to build your credit and manage it, you know, all mm -hmm. those foundational things essentially down the road help you when you're building your business. So don't be in a hurry to be like, try to make a quick buck. Yes, you mm -hmm. can make that quick buck, but if you haven't set up your entity right, the IRS is going to be, hey, you owe us money. <laughs> yeah. And also, I like to tell people, even if you have a big portfolio, real estate is also evolving, mm -hmm. right? You might have a, yeah, the other day, somebody messaged me and said, I have a few doors. What can you guys teach me? I was mm -hmm. like, you have the wrong attitude. Because <laughs> there is things in real estate right now, like short-term rentals. That's mm -hmm. a whole different ball game right now. If you look at the numbers, my wife is running some numbers on some of the properties we're trying to acquire. Mm -hmm. The cash flow on those can be incredible. But of course, you want to make sure your city allows them. Yep. You want to make sure you get a license, the right license and all that stuff. So you as a, an investor, regardless where you are, if you're only getting started, mm -hmm. there is things you can do right now that are going to help you in the future, mm -hmm. right? Just be gracious to yourself, learn the foundations. We tell this to people every day, learn how to set up your entity, learn about credit, learn about retirement accounts. Maybe you could borrow money from your own, you know, mm -hmm. as you essentially grow this business. And if you have a few doors, learn about the latest strategies. For example, mm -hmm. the short-term renters, you could convert some of your portfolio into that and it's gonna help you. Yep. The other class we teach is about pay down, paying down debt fast right? Many of us have mortgages and some of us look at our, our mortgages as a liability. Mm -hmm. What if you are able to pay that down faster? We mm -hmm. have a class called Velocity Banking, which teaches people to pay down debt, student loans, car loans, mortgages, thereby you save that interest and you're able to save interest, but also build equity faster. And then mm -hmm. you can leverage that equity to acquire other properties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, it's really incredible. If you want to be in this for the long haul, give yourself grace and learn the right way. But well, since I joined this business, I've seen, I would say investors in quotes, mm -hmm. screw people over, yep. lose a bunch of money. Why? Because they did not take the time to learn the right way. Mm -hmm. The other day I came across an investor who helped somebody, a realtor investor, helped somebody get a, a property under contract for it. 
but they did not register the deed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two years later, the person is not on title. So I highly encourage you learn the right way. <laughs> Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to pay the price down the road. It's just a matter of time. Well, yeah, that's a that's a lot of great information, um, you know. And obviously, we could we could talk about this at length later. Uh, but what I also love is is you guys really want to focus on helping build financial freedom, right? Absolutely. Um, so talk about that because obviously, you know, you you your your wife, you know, has has a has a great job, you know, and she could continue to do that. Um, you could continue to do what you were doing in the past. Um, but talk about the, the financial freedom piece of that, of, of why is this investment now of, of time and education and learning going to help pay off in, in the future for you and your, your wife? <clears throat> Absolutely. So before I actually, um, when we had the film business and things were not really working as we wanted, mm -hmm. I, was, I had literally applied to go to school for a master's. At some mm -hmm. point, I thought PhD. My wife was like, I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big pain points was how are we going to retire comfortably right we love to give back we love to travel the world we have some charities we support in africa and would love to support whichever ventures even locally mm -hmm. so financial freedom comes into play because if we are able to redeem our time if we know that we have a, a secure future mm -hmm. then we are able to enjoy our lives you know mm -hmm. but when you when you look at the way things are going right now, there is not that many people that are going to be able to retire comfortably because right. of the cost of retirement homes, the cost of that, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially, you want to take a hold of your future now as opposed to hope that it's going to change. Something magical is going to happen in the future or you're going to win the lottery. And mm -hmm. there is very simple things. If you learn ways to pay down your debt, student loan, you know, ways to knock out debt and then leverage assets that you have. Things mm -hmm. like if you have a side gig, even though you have a W-2, that's going to help you save on taxes, right? If you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Essentially simple things like that, that allow you to keep more of your money. Yeah. You know, one of the questions we ask every day is, do you want to learn first how to make more money or how to keep the money that you make? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because if you go out there and make a bunch of money and haven't learned how to keep it, it's going to be gone, right? Right. So financial freedom is very important because lots of people are bound in debt. They don't realize there is a way out of that debt, you know. But mm -hmm. simple things like having a side gig really allows you to get on that path to save on taxes and maybe put some of that money to paying down your debt. And then down the road, you're in a better place to invest. Yes. Right? Yeah. So. Well, and we've, we've touched on that in the past when we've had guests on talking about budgeting that, because let's mm -hmm. say you're making $50,000 and you're spending $50,000. If you think, well, if I could just make $100,000, now I'll have so much more money. But if you haven't attacked the root cause Absolutely. of figuring out how to save money and put money aside mm -hmm. and put money towards assets, if you make a hundred thousand, you're probably just going to spend a hundred. Exactly. So you've, you've got to tackle both issues. You've got to tackle the, the spending issue mm -hmm. so that as your income grows, you're able to put more money aside. Otherwise you're just living a higher lifestyle and not putting anything yeah. towards financial freedom in the future. You're just spending it. It's just in and out, in and out, in and yeah. out. Somebody said, somebody likes to use this statement. You're broke at a whole different level. <laughs> you're Correct. broke at a higher level. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for, for coming on and, and sharing your story. How many years have you been in real estate investing? It's honestly two and a half years. So but I mean, I'll take years. that back because I started exploring this back in Uganda, totally different environment. Then I moved to Massachusetts. I bought the CD. So I was kind of in, mm -hmm. I would say I was in startup mode. Yeah. But I didn't realize I would have actually written off some of these expenses, but I didn't know that you can be in startup mode for three and a half years. But anyway, mm -hmm. my biggest, our biggest success we've seen was in the last two and a half years. Yeah, you guys have done a, an amazing thing. And for, you know, we talked about beforehand for people in real estate that just can't get started. Um, you know, there's people like you that have shown, hey, I'm, I'm not doing anything close to real estate right now. 
and I can plug into a system, I can plug into a program mm -hmm. and I can be successful if I just follow the plan. So congratulations to, to you and your wife on what you've accomplished. And I'm excited for you to, to continue to build that. And you guys have great hearts. You want to give back. You want to help others, which is why you have this coaching and training that you're working with people on to, to help them and show them the path of how do they, how they can do that. So uh, why don't you just talk a, a minute or two about, you know, how folks can get a hold of you and what you're, what you're working on. Absolutely. And thanks Mike for putting this together. I really appreciate it. Cause really <laughs> truth is there's a lot of realtors that could get into this, but they don't realize right and mm -hmm. sometimes we when people call us they're kind of mixed up they're like oh yeah i want to get my license we're like okay do you want to be the investor or do you want to help people buy and sell houses you can mm -hmm. do both <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's, we we like to kind of tell tell the tell them the difference so they know what they're headed for but yeah yep. so thanks for taking you know time to do this to educate people out there because mm -hmm. that really helps a lot so yeah you definitely can find us on instagram it's Anna Roy, simple as that. It's Anna Roy on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, we have webinars every week. So if you go to our Instagram, you should be able to navigate through the link tree to our weekly webinars. We hold property tours as well mm -hmm. every weekend to showcase what we're doing. You get to see the different flips or buy and holds we have at different stages, just mm -hmm. so you can get a feel of this and get the confidence. If we can do it, you can do it as well. And so I would recommend that you, even um, our website too, could lead you to, uh, I guess, our inbox so that we can connect with you. Mm -hmm. And so that is um, AnnaRoyInc.com. Yep. Yeah, you can find us there as well. We are on Facebook. We actually have a Facebook page called Achieve Investments. This is where we share about the coaching and classes so that individuals can just hang out with us, get to know us and see if we are a good fit for what they're looking for. Yep. right because really reality is you want people who kind of feel like they're part of your tribe yep. <laughs> and we want them to feel comfortable about who we are what you're doing because some people want to sell you something and fly out of town but we want you to get a sense of who we are and see if mm -hmm. we're a good fit to help you on your journey absolutely well thanks so much roy for coming on appreciate you sharing and looking forward to hearing your success and growth in the future absolutely mike thanks much and uh, Bless you for all you're doing for the community.